Hey, Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond sisters, it's Donna, and today I have a very special guest for you. Hi, Christy. Christy Hi, is a, went through Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond and is now in the Optimize program, which is the continuation of our journey. She's one amazing woman. She's an amazing mom, amazing friend. I mean, you name it, Christy. I just, I mean, you're just like all wrapped up in goodness. So I love it. And I'm so glad that you're here today. And if those of you who are new to the DG community, my name is Donna Rudowitz, and I help women post-divorce reclaim their power back, step back into their brilliance, get that good juju going, make good decisions for themselves, and really begin to live a life that they want to create, right? That co-creation of a life, not the life that our ex-husband wanted us to create, not the life our mom wanted us to create, or our sister, or our friend, brother, spouse, we get to decide what this life is. So without further ado, here's Christy. Christy, why don't you just, I'll leave it to you to introduce yourself and to give our sisters a background of who you are, what you do. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And that was a very nice uh, welcome. So I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. I said, I, for those, we, Christy and I were chatting before we started this and I was so excited because Christy, you really have been, you know, just an amazing, just amazing all around, amazing to work with, amazing to see when you started DG to where you are now. So I was saying that this is a long overdue and I'm just so excited for you to be here, but go ahead, finish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, I am 52 years old. I'm a stay at home mom. Luckily have the ability to at least right now be a stay at home mom still to five kids. Mm -hmm. Although four of the five are older, uh, they're 18 and older. I have a 10 year old at home still. So she keeps me young. And she right. does. Yes. You have what I call the range. <laughs> yeah, definitely the range. It was, you have the range. It was very interesting because the first year we were looking at college for my oldest daughter. We were also looking at preschool for my, oh my daughter. gosh, isn't that very <laughs> that is, I never knew that, but that's really, that's cool. I yeah, love it. It was, it was cool, love it. strange, and fun all at the same time. Yes, right. Strange, fun, all at the same time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband decided that he wanted to be separated earlier this year at the end of February. And well, I knew we had some issues, totally caught me off guard, and I was at a loss. And I found Donna as, you know, it's meant to be because there was her master class, which got yeah. me to Donna, which has taken me through this, uh, I'll call it a self rediscovery journey. Yes. Yes. And you know what, Christy, what I love about you in, and I remember our first call together where there was, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of worry. There was a lot of fear. And, you know, I think we get to a point in our marriage where we know, like you said, the marriage wasn't the best, right. But it wasn't as if you were, you thought that it would be ending, right. We kind of think, okay, like, here's what we're going to do. It's not the best, but We'll work through it. You know, you still had a young child at home and you're figuring out, okay, we're just, we'll figure it out. And to sort of get on this path where there's nothing to figure out other than like, this is what he wanted. And now it's reacting to the environment is very distressing, right? Especially when you have, you have older children you're managing, you have your younger daughter you're managing, you have yourself that you're managing. But the one thing that I really remembered and that stood out for me with you is that you, you're a purveyor of finding the answer, right? Like you, you're not one to sit home and twiddle your thumbs. You had done some Tony Robbins courses. You're actually yes. very, I think you were in a Tony Robbins. I had just done the virtual UPW. Yeah. You had just done it. And you're like, I don't know if I should do divorce and creativity because I'm doing this. I was like, you absolutely need to do both. <laughs> like this is, <laughs> I absolutely did. <laughs> and you did. Right. But that was like the point of, where, where I really respect that in you is that even though what your world may have felt like, which was what I call when I was in that space, there was a tsunami. That's the only thing I could think about. There's no other word to describe it because it's sort of like you're sitting there going, is this even my life? Like, I can't even believe this is right. happening. But what you knew is that even though you were in the tsunami, I'm not going to let this take me down. I am going to find my way through. Exactly. I, yes. I didn't want, you know, to be on that path 
miserable path for the rest of my life. Like you talk about those women you meet who are miserable, but their divorce was like 20 years later. I, yeah. I knew I didn't want that. And yeah. I couldn't be that. I, you know, I had my daughter who was, I mean, she was nine at the time, but you know, I didn't want to be that model or that example for her either. I wanted to still provide her the best, you know, experience and, and life that we could at yeah. the time. And, and that I was already on the process, like you said, of wanting and needing that change in my life to start with this just gave me a little more to work again a little more to explore <laughs> right because what i what i like to say here at dg is that all of the, the the therapy the books and the courses those are all wonderful pieces of the puzzle you will never hear me you know say that i i, I don't approve of that well with the exception of and and i don't mean this in a bad way but divorce care i think is a wonderful program however what I was understanding about divorce care is that they there's sort of a framework that we're broken, which I don't agree with, right? That that because I don't believe we're broken. But one of the things that we have to just be very careful about is when we're going through things that are sponsored by other places. Now I'm you know me, I'm very spiritual. I I believe in God and whatever universe, if you want to say I say God, but the church, it's when it's sponsored by the church, the church has its agenda of what's good for them. Right. It's true. Yeah. That may not necessarily be good for you. So that's why it's important that we really take the time to evaluate and see where our heart is going and what's what is our agenda. Let's talk about that for a second. Right. Okay. How long how long was were you running on someone else's agenda? And I don't mean it that it was necessarily a bad way. I think it's almost just like as moms. Right. You know, like how long have you, you know, just think about, think back to a really long time, right? Um, you know, my oldest is 24. And while I always, you know, wanted to be a mom, um, it's probably once she was born that I started at least on that path of someone else's agenda. Yeah. Probably, I'm sure before that, to some extent, because you follow, you know, your parents' agenda. Like, you I, do. Guess, I guess I started way before that, because when I went to college, I didn't know what to do. And my dad, I was good at math and science. So my dad's like, be an engineer. I was an engineer. You should be an engineer. Women in engineering make so much money. And so I went out to school and did engineering. So yeah. I guess I've been on that somebody else's agenda for a long time. And I, I feel like looking back that I never took enough time in the past to figure out my own true agenda. And even if I had some inkling of it, like yeah. you said, as you're a mom and you get into these daily routines and ruts, especially with the four kids all like two years apart, it's a little overwhelming um, that you just, I got just sucked into that. And that yeah. became the routine. And there wasn't a lot of thought about any other agendas at yeah. that point. Because there really isn't time. And like you yeah. said, I don't, I don't think any of us, we just don't know what we don't know because we weren't taught exactly. that. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I think, and, and again, I don't mean this in a bad way. It's just the agenda of society is that that's what women do. You're supposed to take, you know, take care of your children. Right. You know, and even if you look in the workplace, you'll see women who are going to work. They, they may even be the main breadwinners. They're very successful at work, but yet they're still taking care of managing at home, right? Absolutely. They're managing the kids. And what's, what's happening is that we are, we're really burning the candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. And not many of us get a second chance at life. Yeah. And that's where I think that even though the divorce and even though the separation is, it, it, there's no words for the feelings and the emotions that go along with it. And what I'd like to say is like, there's, that's the mess, but there is a miracle in the mess. And that miracle is we do get to say, wait a minute, I'm going to draw the line in the sand. And that was my life. And I look back at my life. I'm, I'm happy I was able to raise my daughters. Being with them was very important to me. Yeah. Right. Be having being that time was important. But what I realized after my divorce was I didn't know who I was. Exactly. Right. Now I'm left in this oh, space. Yeah. Right. Like, what you do, I do I don't know who I am. Anymore. Did you, I, didn't we have conversations about that? If I remember our first. Right. I think it was like early, early on. Yeah. Like, Donna. <laughs> I, I don't even know who I am. I don't know what exactly. I, I wear. What am I supposed to be doing now? Exactly. No, oh, that's totally how I felt. Yeah. And I think that there's, again, a big proportion of women, divorced or not even divorced, but they'll they'll go to their grave really not knowing themselves. And so, again, this divorce isn't something 
or the separation or the pain isn't something we woke up as little girls and said, Oh, please me, please me, please me. No, we don't, we don't want this. We wake up as little girls with our dream and our mission. However, there are going to be a select few of us who are going to answer our call and make our faith bigger than our fear and step up to say, I am going to recreate myself. I am going to reclaim my brilliance. I am going to draw the line. And so tell me about your work, about what was important to you and where you are now and what you noticed about yourself over this journey. Oh, I mean, that's hard. There's so much, I guess. I know. I know. (laughs) Well, try to sum it up. (laughs) Or maybe what we could even do, this might be easy. Maybe kind of think about the top three things, right? That you really, if you, if you would, the first thing that comes to your mind, it doesn't have to be, again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just like the first thing that comes to your mind of what were the, you know, the three things that were really important to you and kind of where you are now. Okay. Um, Well, I think one of the biggest things was, you know, realizing that I didn't know who I was and there was a path, there is a path to like figure it out. There's kind of like a way to go and it's really hard to do that yourself. So there you go. Oh my God, Chrissy, you just took the words out of my head because I was going to, I didn't want to interrupt you because what you're saying is so important, but I was going to ask you to pause, to ask you, can you do this work on your own? I mean, maybe somebody out there can. I couldn't. Okay. As as I'm like going to tell you, I can't. No way. And I, I can't either. And I think that that's one of the things that, you know, when I'm speaking to people or just in general, when I'm having conversations with people, you know, we, again, we, as women, we have a specific tool set that we've used to get to this point. So we may have good family, we may have good friends, we may have our sort of our career in order or what our role is as, as a mom in order, but we have kind of, but it's, it's this relationship with ourselves as well as really preparing ourselves later on down the road for the right person to come into our life. And I will tell you, most women that I speak to will say, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do like, you know, therapy, I'm going to read a book and I'm going to do that. And again, it's wonderful but you can't do this work alone. It's not going to give you the transformation. It gives you the information. And what ends up happening is you're consuming information. Again, it's good. And you think you're making progress, but you're not right. Because the same feelings are coming up. The same triggers are coming up. The same fears are coming up. Exactly. So, so, so tell me again, you, so you were going, you were saying like, I just realized I couldn't do it on my own. Yeah. I mean, I think like you said, so many of, of us have a certain toolkit, which is great. And it's gotten us as far as we've gotten so far, but we don't yeah. have all the tools to process this and we wouldn't be in this position if we did. And I think a lot of the key came with the transformation side of it because, you know, yes. we're transforming ourselves we're not just learning this and say okay this is great now let's practice it right it's not like just one and done it's a transformation which never works or you know it's very hard for that to work you you know like the tony robbins stuff it was great and wonderful and i came away with all these ideas and then like a month later i'm like yeah am i doing (laughs) things anymore i know i know i should but you know it doesn't just transform into your life that way and this DG gave me the ability to have those transformations inside of me and those shifts. So, you know, like you talk about creating the new neural pathways, like all that is what you need to move forward. And you have the continued support, not just with the coaching, but with the whole community. Yeah. Because it's amazing. Like you said, when we come together and talk with these group calls, how so many of us have this like same concept or the same questions we're coming to you. And then there's this energy that like, oh, wow, that's like, oh, yeah, that makes so much sense. Like, I get it. And like, it's just raising each other up. Yeah. I think, you you know, that's what you need in life. It takes a village not just to raise kids, but I think it takes a village to raise yourself. Yes. And there is no shame. And this is something that I really, I think it's one of my missions as just a woman, as a friend, as a coach, is there is no shame to say, I can't do this alone and I need help. And unfortunately, society makes us a hundred percent. But what what I look at is I always look at it in a, in a very unique way. And this is the way I look at it. If, if you're running an organization, so let's say you're the CEO of a company, okay. you are never going to have all of the roles. You can't run the company if you were going to be the admin, if you're going to be the marketing, if you were going to be the um, customer service, if you were going to do training and development and human resources, you yeah. can't. So the That's job 
and and the role of a chief executive officer is to hire people for her that could do the job that right. that help her take the company to the next level. And I kind of think about that as our life. We are the CEO of our life. We're not supposed to know how to do everything. <laughs> but our job is to find the right people and the right support to help us so that we can get to that next level for ourselves and our family and our generations to come. Because another big thing at DG is also not just the community and the sisterhood, like you said, it's like this energy and this vortex, Absolutely. but it's also the generational path that we're putting for our children. So our children and our children's children and our children's children don't have to go through what we went through because we are literally breaking neural pathways. We are literally Right. ending generational curses. And it's not just woo woo. And oh, let's throw this on the wall and see if it sticks. No, we're transforming. <laughs> we yeah. are these Definitely. genes inside of us and our brain and our thought like we're the same person. But we're not. Right. Yeah. It's almost like Christy 2.0, Donna 2.0. And, and then we'll go to the next version, Christy 3.0 and 4.0. Exactly. Because it's yeah. the constant evolution. It definitely is. I definitely feel like that's happening. And, yeah. you know, it's even with that process, you still get it, especially for me, because I'm still, you know, working through the divorce process, our divorce isn't finalized yet. Yeah. So you still get these waves of the tsunami coming in once in a while. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, learning that that's okay. And that's going to happen. And it's just a, a feeling and emotion and it's okay to feel them. Right. But you're still moving forward and you get back up you know, pull yep. up your girl pants and keep going That's and it. follow through the methods that are getting you through all this. Yep. And I like to say, it's kind of like when rain happens, you don't freak out. You're not running around the house crying. I mean, unless it's like a hurricane or something, but no, what you do is you get your umbrella, you put on your raincoat, you get in your car and you go where you're supposed to go. Exactly. It's the same thing where in the past, because the, we were so emotionally triggered we were activated because it was our heart had an open wound we didn't do the healing our heart hadn't been transformed yet and so it's like pour, pouring salt in a wound anything can activate it anything yeah i mean i remember going through the grocery store and just being fine running into someone and hey chat 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 hanging out great 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 and then i go down the next aisle and i'm in tears mm-hmm Exactly. And you don't even know what it was. I have no idea. I'm like, what is going on here? And this was this was a journey for me. You're not in that space yet. But for me, it was even post divorce, right? It was a couple even years after divorce where I really had gained my my sort of what I would say, grounding, but there were still those emotions and those moments. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the beauty of coaching and the beauty of divorce and gracefully and beyond is we learn how to not fear those moments. Right. Right. We learn how to not create a story about them. We also learn we're not going to buy a ticket to the circus. Exactly. Right. Because just because we're thinking it doesn't mean it's true. And then right behind it comes that reframe and right behind it comes that thought. So our refractory period of what maybe used to wobble us for months, years at a time is exactly. literally moments. Exactly. Right. And we're able to see objectively. And that's what I love where you're at, where you'll you'll be moving through something and you, you'll you'll go through the modules, you do the modules, you're going to come to the call, you do the work, you're there, you're invested. And then if a question comes up, there's no crying about it and worrying about it and ruminating about it. You vox or Donna, <laughs> you say, hey, Donna, I have a question for you. Yeah, and this is but I mean, how does it feel to have that like power for you? And again, I know you're still going through, you know, the steps of where you're at. So it doesn't mean you're immune to the sadness and the and no. all of that. But how does it feel to have a, that power for yourself that I get to choose where my life is going? I'm going to choose my physiological state of being and I have resources around me that I can tap into. It's great. I mean, it's very empowering and, and refreshing because I don't think I felt that way for many years, if maybe even ever, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so to know that, you know, this is okay and that wobbles happen, but feel it. And now you know what to do to move on. Right. And like, if I don't, or I get stuck, I box her down and <laughs> figure out what to do to, that I need to reframe to move on. It's like, what do I need to do to reframe to move on? And that's it right? It's the strategy because most times 
and even in my own thoughts, the reason why we're in flux or the reason why we're experiencing such what I would say painful emotions around it is because we're in dissonance, mm -hmm. right? Is our heart and our spirit has one way that it's leading us, but our brain is leading us the other way, right? Like your heart and your spirit may say, all is well, because that's our global belief system, right? At Divorce mm -hmm. and Gracefully, all is well. Everything always works out for me. Absolutely. And now we could we could honestly honor that. And even in the suck, all right. is well, right? Even when it looks like things are falling apart because we're not, that doesn't matter to us anymore because it just seems like it's falling apart. It's not. Like we know it, it's all, all going to be well. But in the past, when we're in dissonance, that that soul journey, we don't hear it. Exactly. And, and what we hear is the pain, the worry, the fear, the doubt. And you get stuck. Yeah. And then you get stuck. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know if you felt this too, but the loneliness. Oh, yeah. Then you feel like you're alone. Then yeah. you feel, I don't even know who I could talk to. And then you kind of, you know, your friends and stuff, you know, you're going by the water cooler and they're like, they go the other way. Like, you know, there's only so many times your friends can help you. And then it comes to the point of despair in a sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, and again, it doesn't mean that your, you know, life is terrible. It just means it's what we're feeling. It's like, we're feeling trapped and lonely and those ruminating thoughts. And when we're looking at the other person, right. Our ex or whoever they're with, and then we're like, wait a minute, they're moving on. Right. Right. They're doing, why, why can't I move on? Exactly. Definitely. Until, there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until you don't. So let's talk about the difference of just the feeling. Cause I think this is really important for people to understand is we, our brain can't think two thoughts at once, right? It can only think one thought at a time at all times. So at any given moment, we have the ability to retrain our brain and to bring it to where we want it to be. So let's just talk about the thoughts of feeling when that, that, I'm not powerful and I feel stuck to the thoughts of, I feel like I have power to, I have hope. I have creation. Let's just talk about like, what's the difference for you on that? Cause I think to me, that's the greatest gift I've, I, I, I think for my, my, myself to feel peace. Right. Definitely. Um, well in the feelings, you know, of struggle and, and stuff, it's just for me anyway, it's just overwhelming. It's like, yeah. it, you look at things and when something goes bad, then everything is bad. There is, no, there is no good, good point. You know, everything right. is in the suck and it's hard to see the light. And it's just like, even your physical presence for me, you know, you're more, you know, you're yeah, sure no, you're right. Around. Like you, you sort of, you notice yourself, like you're just your shoulders, you know, right. versus sitting up straight, you know, right. and then, shoulders yeah. back and power. Right. Yeah. And just the, being able to, you know, realize, okay, this is happening. Cause again, I, it still happens. Life is still life. There are still triggers. There are still moments. There's still bad things in the world that happen, but yeah. being able to say, okay, this is what's happening. This is what I'm feeling. Okay. Why am I feeling that? What's going on? What is, what can I learn from that? And then going into the reframe, well, you know, it's, it's okay. Like that's just a feeling. I don't need to mean, make it mean I'm a terrible person or I've done everything wrong or I can't do anything. Cause that's just the story I've been telling myself that's yep. really not accurate. It's not, it's that's, <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that Christy, because I hope everyone who's listening to this really heard what Christy said. Our stories are not accurate. <laughs> They're not accurate. As a matter of fact, our memories and our feelings about something mm -hmm. come to the table. We're already 50% is, is missing. And then out of that 50%, it, those are distorted beliefs. We omit things. We create things, right? And, and it's when you understand that and you realize, wait a minute, but I don't have to do that anymore because guess what I get to do? If I'm going to be married to a story, I'm going to marry the story I want. Exactly. Exactly. The feeling that I am in control. I am powerful. Yes. Life is happening the way I want. I am creating it. And it's just so powerful and peaceful, you know, to. Life is, yeah. life always happens for us. Exactly. Right? It always happens for us. And I'm just going to give, I mean, this is like a perfect example. So we were talking about this before we went on today. And 
Thanksgiving is coming up next week. So I had a cleaning company here to clean my couch because my the dog had been sleeping on it and I just really wanted to get it nice and clean. And they were supposed to come earlier than they did. They did it. But, and I was, I was not freaking out because here's what I was saying. Everything always works out for me. I have a 12 o'clock Facebook live with Christy and it's, it's going to be fine. There's no problem. Do you, why don't you know it? They, they finished at 1159 there Eastern. There was not, and of course, but of course it works out that way, of right? Yes. Because that's what we think. I now in my brain, I don't look at what could go wrong. I go, I look at what's going right. So tell me about that part of you where you're at in your brain and your thinking. Like how, how, you know, how fast has your refractory period been now? And what do you find to be really helpful for you? Is there anything that you could share here that you could say, Hey, listen, this works so good for me. This is something that you want to do yourself. Sure. So the refractory period has definitely gotten a lot smaller. I mean, there's still, especially going through the divorce, there's still moments that that triggers a lot and I have some big reactions and that might be a little longer time, but it's not, you know, days. It's yep. usually not even all day, even for the really big ones anymore, which is right. great. Um, and a lot of what helps me is the Hope and Ono prayer. I um, love Hope and Ono. Yeah. You know, just forgiving him and forgiving myself too. Cause you know, I, I tend to hold a lot of guilt and feel the responsibility, whether it's right or not. And even if it is, nobody's perfect. You know, we do our best. And if we need to correct that, we do it and then we move on. Yep. So it's yep. that piece is huge. And then I mean, it's really kind of all of it, I guess. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing is kind of in, in those moments, once you give you, you got to, I feel like you got to give yourself time to process it. You can't just say, okay, well, I'm feeling sad. Well, I don't want to feel sad. Stop. I mean, right. I do that a little bit, but if you don't kind of process it, then it's just going to say, ha. Yeah. <laughs> guess what? Minutes, or an hour when you think you're good in the middle of cooking dinner. Yeah. You did a knock on your shoulder. Guess what? We're not done. Right. So you got to process it a little, but then it's like the reframe, not just of your mind, but like for me, it's the whole body. So when I'm done, I literally like, okay, Christy, stop. We're done with that now. And it's okay. If I'm sitting here doing whatever on the computer, it's like, okay, it's time to get up and go for a walk. It's time to play, you know, my soundtrack of awesome. And, yep. and just, that's what works for me. The getting out of my head. Getting out of your, and what I also will say, Christy, is that, you, you like myself, um, we know, again, we can't do this work on our own. So even at, in the good times, I still work with a coach. You were working with Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond, right? It's not, yeah. it wasn't like a one and done. It's the continuation uh -huh. and, and, and it's the journey of, of the work, right? And I think yes. that's what makes the big difference is, is that it's, it's this, it's the gift of just really getting to create ourself, but getting to create it in a way where we're supported, where we have a community, Definitely. where we're being coached, where we're trying, you know, because this is the one thing that I'm just going to just shout out to women who are listening to this, who are listening to Christy and where Christy is now. Even look, I mean, you could even just see where Christy is. She's smiling, right? Look at you. You're smiling. You're bright. You feel good. You have a sense of happiness. You have a sense of peace. And again, it doesn't mean that there's days that the, the wobble is not there. Yeah, there's days there's wobbles. There's days. But, you know, you have a vision for the future. And that is not just for, that just didn't come to Christy. She made a decision and a commitment to invest in herself and invest in the work and do it and, and actually continue to do it. Right. Yes. Because yes. success isn't reserved for the convenient. It's reserved for the committed. And I will say this and I and this is another thing, Christy, that I'm just going to just give you a shout out on, because now when you understand coaching and you understand the journey, you realize that even though a coaching call may not be a convenient time for you or there's other things going on, you work your life around the calls. Absolutely. Right. You make sure that you know, you're, you're not complaining about this doesn't work for me. And oh, man, this sucks. And let me just try to find all the people that will tell me that oh, this isn't good for me. No, right. what you do is you're like, okay, this may not be the best. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this, I'm going to do that. And and there's no fret. And there's no worry. Because you have done what I consider to be one of the most important things to ourself, which is you committed to yourself. Right. 
And that's, that's key. It's, it's totally key. Yeah. You, you have to make that commitment. You have to make the commitment. If you think you're going to change and you're going to get to where Christy is, and I say this with love, this is not, <laughs> this is not anything I'm saying out of love, but I'm, I'm saying it out of love because I'm so it's, I see it every single day. If you don't make an, the commitment to yourself, to change and hire the right person to help you. You will continue to be in circles, chasing your tail and wondering why your life isn't the way it is. And, and here's the tragedy is that five years go by like that. 10 years go by like that. You know, when we're in our twenties, we have a little bit more time to say, ah, oh, maybe I'll figure it out. Or let me, I know better. I'm going to do it my way. And great. Because Five years from 25 to 30, that's not that big. But when you're 50 and 55 and 60 and, you know, now, you know, say you're 55 and now five years from now, you're going to be 60 or 10 years, 65. That's that time is very, very different. Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, and, and, and I find so many women will be kind of. And I, I, I remember this myself. I was so fearful to take that first step. I was so because I wasn't I didn't come from that. That wasn't how my family grew up. Right. Right. My family grew up with, you don't, you don't share your shit. You don't share anything. You don't talk, make sure the neighbors don't hear. <laughs> we yeah. don't talk about things. Right. Right. And so it, 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 it was such, I was in such struggle until I opened up and I started my, when I first started working with my coach and I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> I didn't even realize this is possible. And I think, I think that's something for you to be very proud of is your commitment to yourself your loved ones, right? And their future. And what would you say to the woman who is so afraid, who's never done this type of stuff or has, or has some sort of self-development work, but it's been through the courses and didn't stuff, but they're still stuck in this area of their life, right? Like the Tony Robbins, they're going to the Tony Robbins. I love Tony Robbins. I love the immaterial. I have all his books. I listen to his podcast. I just love it. But like you said, if it left to my own devices, it's going on the shelf and it's collecting dust. That's it because it's not, it's information and right. it, information is great. I like to couple information with the transformation, but what, it, what would you say to that woman who is, who's like you, who had, she's doing great in the sense of she's going to the courses, she's reading the information, but this part of her life, she's just stuck and she's praying. She's going to bed praying for like, I just, something has to change. Right. And wh what would you tell her? How would you tell her to handle her fear or, you know, how, how to handle her movement forward for herself? What would you give her guidance on? Um, I think, again, I think the, a big thing is to find someone who can help yep. coach you over, you know, where you're stuck, whatever that is. And maybe that you know, you need help to see how to make that transformation happen so you can actually move forward versus just the talking about it. Yes. Um, you know, there's obviously different places, reasons people could be stuck. And, you know, for the fear side of it, it is scary. It is hard. It's especially hard for women, I think, to be vulnerable, especially to someone they don't know. Like you can have your girlfriends and they've heard your stories and you're complaining probably to the point where they're like, yeah, we don't like, yeah, they're like yeah, we're, yeah, I, there's, we've heard it. And they want, and I really believe Christy, like, I think our friends want to help us. Oh, they, totally. have, they have the heart, they have, their That's intention right. is there, but it almost is a burden to them. You know, it's, right. their, it's not their job to fix us. And, and, and it's, and, and I kind of think about it now, like, wow, I was a little, that's a burden to give on to my friends, my misery and my sadness. I mean, it's a gift at the same time. Like it's nice. That's what friends are for. They're there for us and I'm there for my friends. But when it comes consistent, right, right where it's consistent over a long period of time, now, now it's, it's a burden on them because they have their own shit to handle, let alone exactly. mine, let alone it's, mine. And it's right. not their journey. I mean, I totally kind of feel like that's kind of what happened yeah. in my marriage. Some of it, I, you know, some of it was immaturity and just the yep. way, you know, our marriage worked, but I kind of became dependent on my husband to yep. make me happy when I was sad. And one that wasn't something he was very capable of with his emotional state, but that's not his overall responsibility. And I mean, yes, for our friends and our, our partners, we're going to do what we can to make them happy because we want them to be happy. But ultimately yep. it, it's our responsibility. We ultimately have to be the ones to deal with it, figure it out and, and get through it and move on. You yep. can't 
rely on everybody. And so you No, because then it's almost like too the blinds leading the blind. Because well, now you're that, telling people the thing. most of the people you're talking to, right? Most of the people they have no idea. They have right. the most screwed up lives themselves too, right? And you're exactly. like, and again, I mean it's beautiful. You see the most beautiful people and and but everybody in the, it to their own right has their own battles, right? And now you're following mm -hmm. someone and you're taking advice of someone and it's like the blind leading the blind. And, and then, and you know, there's another bigger part of it, Christy, is that each one of us comes to this earth with her own soul journey. Right. And you have your soul journey. I have my soul journey. So the only way I can only see life through my eyes per se. So I may guide you based upon my soul journey, but what happens if it's not your soul journey? Exactly. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Right? And most of the time it's not going to be. There may be similarities, but yeah. I don't think two people have the same. Soul. No, we don't. And so now we're now we're hitching our wagon to someone else's wagon. It's kind of like getting in the passenger seat of a car, letting the other person drive, and then getting to the destination and getting mad at the person. Because that's not where you that's wanted. not where you wanted to go. And you're that's like, oh my God, what <laughs> what happened? You know, but it 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 is. And the work, you know, especially the work we do here at DG isn't about finding a soulmate it's about finding our own true soulmate us right first first Absolutely. because i think the trajectory of the work we do really is is the knowing that at one point we will have that partner in our life yeah. but the most important work is cultivating our life our heart to so we could be in full alignment with ourselves, right so we could be ready to attract him in and attract the right person when it's time Exactly. Because until you have all that, you're not going to be able to attract the right person. You know, if you are still dependent on somebody for your emotional state, then you're probably going to attract somebody that's emotionally dependent too. Of course, or, you have to. Or it's dominating, it's, telling you. What it's to the law of the universe, right? And the right. law of the universe is if you don't feel valuable, you are going to attract people who won't who won't value you. Right. Right. If, if, if you, if you have a fear that someone's not going to be true to you, let's say it's a loyalty issue, you're going to attract someone who will not be able to be true to you. Exactly. And, and it, and it, and this is the part of the puzzle that's, that's fascinating to me because we don't attract by our brain. We attract by our subconscious. It's, and these are the past patterns, beliefs, and behaviors that are so, that are so deep down inside, but it has to happen. It's, it's the law. There is no, I mean, you could fight <laughs> electricity all day long, but electricity is electricity. You turn on a switch, you're getting light. You, you want to, you're on the edge of a cliff. You take a, a step off. You're going down. Gravity is law. It's the same thing. Right. And so this is why it's so important to do the work within you to sort of clear those past patterns, beliefs, and behaviors to raise your vibrational frequency because you could fight it all day long. And if you're not transforming from the inside out, you're going to attract that person. And even though in the beginning they may seem like, Oh my gosh, this is great. He's great. Guarantee four or five years down the road, it's going to turn out not that way because you're not going to fight the law. The law is happening. And so this puts people sometimes in a place of fear, but for us, it puts us in a place of faith in a place of hope, because if, if we really, Realize that our patterns and beliefs and behaviors create chaos in our life, then doesn't it also mean that our patterns, beliefs, and behaviors could create wondrous and beautiful part, beautiful things in our life? Absolutely. Right? If things could go, go wrong, can't they go right? Absolutely. And it's right? so funny how, you know, in the past, at least for me, and I think society in general, we're more focused on well, it can go wrong. And this of is course, it's, and we expect it to, it's exactly. you know, we, we expect it to go wrong. And this is, and again, I'm going to put my hand up because I was, I was guilty of this, right? The same, I would expect it to go wrong. Oh, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop or yeah. I'd be like, okay, this is really good. And I was in at the point, Christy, where I would be afraid to say I did like something was going right because I'm like, I'm going to jinx myself. Like, exactly. oh, you, you literally tell yourself, if you say something, you're going to jinx it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to say anything because I'm going to jinx myself. Right. And that's, again valid been there but when we understand the laws of the universe and we begin our transformation we realize there is no there is none of that right there's there's none of that there is no you, you don't have to be ashamed to say anything you don't have to be worried about the shoes going to drop because it's not 
And it's not. And if something shows up in your path that wasn't what you anticipated it to be, maybe you showed up in a different way. Like I always give the story about my pool where I really wanted a pool. I don't know. Did I ever tell you this story? I know this okay. story. So I had this dream of having a pool my entire life. I've, I'm a water person. Okay. And in, but in my mind, my pool was a kidney shaped pool. It would have had waterfalls, right? Flagstone coping and, 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 and just beautiful. Like if you kind of think about Atlantis resort type of pool, that's what I would want, right? Just yeah. gorgeous. And that's really the reason why I never really got it is because I was like, well, I really don't want, it's not that I wasn't appreciative of a pool, but I said, if I'm going to do a pool, I'm going to do the one that I want, right? When yeah. I really wanted it. Well, anyway, long story short. Now, when I met Michael, my husband, he knew he knew I wanted a pool, but we never had conversations. So I come home one day and now my my house has these, these big windows. So when you walk through the front door, you see the windows to the backyard. Yeah. And usually it's really nice because it's greenery and I have a birdhouse and you can see the birds. And there's this big round, like, bright orangey blue something in my backyard I was like what is that <laughs> now god bless his soul sweet sweet intention he's like I'm surprising you with a pool but it was it, it was an in-tex pool so it was one of those that you put up for the, you know you could put up in a day and it was great we used it for the summer but it was a really good reminder of refining what I really want right to be to be very clear exactly what we want because sometimes things don't show up the way exactly. that we want them to. And that's and definitely so key. It really is the process of learning how, you know, how to refine that. So we don't have to be fearful of it because guess what? My pool showed up. My pool showed up. It just didn't show up in the way I wanted, but it gave me the opportunity to create what I really did want. Makes sense. And then, yeah, I experienced that as well. Definitely. Yeah. And so it's, we're no longer at the victim to effect. We're like the master of cause. Absolutely. You know, and we get to, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, we get to be the model for our kids. Definitely. And that's huge. And that's a big piece of it. It's going through all this. It was amazing to me, you know, talking about the laws of the universe, like how many, how these like past patterns and behaviors really stem from like when you were a baby and you like, yep. you and even have in just thoughts and mm -hmm. that's where all these, you know, parts of you come from. And, you know, you have so many things and in your subconscious trying to protect you that in some cases don't even need to be there anymore because like you're not a kid anymore you're in control you're in, that's right yeah. yeah and that's what we're doing in optimize this month right or the past few months is learning about the different parts of ourselves now that wouldn't been content in the divorce and gracefully and beyond program that you would have been ready to receive because we needed yeah. to do the we need to take the first steps right and that's and i think that's that's what's important too is that you know you want to be led by an expert, right? When you want to find the person that you could say, this is, I, 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 I like the life that she's living, or I like the principles and she's practicing what she's preaching, right? Mm -hmm. And finding that person for you. Now, whether it be for me or whether it be another coach, it doesn't matter, but it's right. finding that person where it's an expert, right? And leading because you could get the information, but unless you know how to put the recipe together, you're not going to get the result. And that's like the other important part is being knowing who to go to, to be led because that's, you know, part of our lives being successful in work or being successful at home or managing life. You have ways you do things. It's not the same tools we use at DG in order to heal our heart. And I will tell you, I think you probably have experienced this as much as I do. We veer off the path a lot, <laughs> right? We were like, Oh, maybe I'm going to, and then, then, but, but then that's why. You have a sisterhood and a community and coaches around you to say, that's great. Hey, Christy, come back over here. Like, let's come on back. And it's like a little nudge, right? Get back. And so it's, I think that's what I would, my sort of thinking for today is to, who's ever listening to this is to not be afraid of your own journey, right? Not, not to be afraid to invest in yourself, not to be afraid to take a chance on yourself. Because if you think about it, you know, going through life, you may have a friend who needed something. You may have a kids who needed something, you know, like at college, you're spending hundreds of thousands in college. You're spending thousands in after school activities for your children. And yet when it comes to really investing in ourselves, whether it be this or something else, it's mm -hmm. amazing how many women will say, I don't have the money. I can't do it. Right. Right. Because, those, yeah. <laughs> right. I was too. I was always that until I wasn't until I realized, no, I'm, I'm just as valuable and I'm worth just as much 
as a friend or my child or what, that, that that's not an expense for me. It's an investment, right? And, and to me, what an investment means is I'm getting a return on it, right? right? It's not a gamble. I'm not going to the casino to bet the ranch and then have everything taken away from me. No, when I invest in myself, I'm investing because I'm expecting a return as, as you with you, right? Yes, it's like, no, I mean, and, and that, whether that be time, energy, money, effort, whatever it is. Right. So, all right, Christy. So thank you for, I mean, we could go on. We could probably talk. Yeah, about I mean, we really could. But what's one thing that you'd like to leave yourself a message because you're going to get a recording of this and you're going to listen to this next year just so you could see where you're at. But what's one, one message that's just in your heart to share? If any. It's good. Um, just that, you know, you can do it. You've got this. Yes. You can do it. You've got this. Exactly. And don't let anybody or anything come in your way of you because Christy has seen this and I have seen this now because Christy, we've been working together for a little while here is that when we put other people in front of us, the only person who loses is us. That's it. And guys, we have one, one chance at this thing called life here in this human body, in this human form. That is it. Like, I hope all of us live to 120. I like to say that that's the Bible age, right? Yeah. 120, happy, healthy, and whole. But I don't know that. Right. And I'm telling you what, I am not going to let anybody or anything come in my way of me living my life full out. Doesn't mean I'm always right. Doesn't mean it does, I don't hit roadblocks along the way. But man, don't put anybody in front of yourself. Absolutely. Put yourself first. You're valuable. You're worthy. You're brilliant. And if you want to bring in a soulmate or a partner that's going to value you, that's going to treasure you, that's going to honor you, that's going to be loyal to you, you have to be that first. Absolutely. Don't sell out on yourself. Don't sit there and pray, please, God, please, God, please, God, send me the right person to work with. Send me the, I really need help. And that person shows up and you're like, I can't do it. Exactly. Can't do you. You've got to say, I've, I'm whatever it is. I'm taking control of my life. I'm taking control. Casey agrees. She's, I don't know if you heard her moaning over here. She's snoring. (laughs) Right. You can be the example for everyone else. Be it your kids, your friends, some random person who might be watching this who needs it. I mean, you know. Yes. Yes. You can show people you can do it. You need to do it. You need to. I wish everybody felt and saw this the way we do, because one of the things we talk about, right, in our group Q&As is what we consider to be like the muggle world, right, Mm -hmm. where where there's you just notice society and how busy people are and how consumed they are by their fear and consumed they are by pain. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's no right or wrong. There's no bad or good. I truly believe we're all trying to do the best we can. But there's a difference between a challenge and suffering. And the muggle world is when you realize like these are people, these are suffering. People are mm-hmm. suffering. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have the same problems here at DG and our philosophy, but we have joy. We have peace. It's we have this this level of just a lightness that I wish everybody would would have. I wish ev- I wish I could share with everybody. But sometimes, even when you want to share it, people because their heart is so broken and their heart is so hurting that they're afraid to even believe that there's good things out there. Right? I again, I was that person. Me too. Until I I let my 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 open my heart and I just knew I needed to do something. Mm-hmm. And so I would say that to, you know, to anybody who's listening, do it, invest do it. in yourself, just Definitely. do it. You are your own best investment. Do not Absolutely. sell out short of yourself. Do not try to do what I call the dime store coaching, which is listen to 20 podcasts and, you know, try to create whatever that person's saying to make it mean something to you. Right. Like, and then right. think that's going to, it's not, no, it's not. It sounds great at the time, but it does sound great at the time. Not a permanent change. Not a permanent change. All right, my friend. So, so glad to see you today. All right, guys, I will see you later. And whoever is ready, if you're listening and you're saying, this is me, this is me, this is me. And I've got, I'm ready to do it. There's going to be a call or a link in the, um, right below us where you could book a breakthrough to life and love call with me. And that's really just a strategy call where I'm going to take some time. And if we're going to have a conversation, we'll see where you're at. 
We'll see where you're stuck. If I could help you, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to let you know what that would look like for you. If I feel there's a different resource for you, same thing. I'm going to let you know what that resource is. So go ahead and, and take advantage of that. And I'll see you later. And Christy, hang with me here one second. Bye, guys. Bye.